Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Be Strong Minded. Today, I have with me the master of the sales himself, Omar Camacho. I'm super excited to have him here because I saw his work on the stage on Avent just a couple of weeks ago here in Las Vegas, and it just took my breath away. So I decided that my audience needs his skills of sales too. For those who don't know Omar, he had worked with multi-million dollar companies to increase sales as well as starting his own very successful coaching business, helping his clients drastically improve their sales so he knows how to truly masterfully sell. Using his approach of find the need provide the service, close the sale. He has made sales not only uh, very likable, but also meaningful. If you get a chance to learn from him, just do it. It work. It will work wonders for your business as well as help you provide top-notch service. Omar, thank you so much for making the time. No, th thank you so much for having me on. Uh, I, when you asked, I was like, you know what? You're super awesome. I, I just want to say I loved your energy. You, you totally light up a room when you walk in. And I'm like, that's awesome. I want to connect with you. And so when you asked me to be on here, I was like, absolutely. Let's make this happen. Uh, let's, let's see what value I can bring. Let's see what I can do for your audience. And let's see how we can connect. So, so awesome. Thank you so much for having me on. Absolutely. You know, and the, the thing that I truly loved about you was also like your energy and how easy it felt. You were just sharing stories from, you know, from your business, from your life, with your family. And in the end, I'm like, I, I'm, I'm buying. I don't know what you're selling, but I am in. So what led you to this path like of sales? Like why you're so passionate about it? Oh, okay. Perfect. No, I love that you asked that. Um, it's so funny because it actually, so I used to be in the mining industry, right? So I used to work for a lot of mines, gold mines, copper mines. And I used to work in like the slumps, like the dirty, like the, you know, the, where they process the metals ass, like the dirty, dirty. Right. And I remember sitting there and I was working about 90 hours a week. Right. I was never home. And I was always tired. It was a lot of physical labor. And I remember sitting there during one break and I was like, you know what? I'm only doing this, this kind of job for the money to support myself, to support my family. This is the only reason I'm doing it. I think it would be really cool if one day I could be known for sales, for money making, for something that creates a lot of money and I can help people not have to do it this hard way. I, I want to show people that there's an easier way to make money. Now, I'll tell you this. I didn't know if that even existed. I didn't even know if that was true. I just remember sitting there having that thought, thinking one day I want to help people make more money and show them that it can be easier and it doesn't have to be as hard if you have the right tools and techniques. And that was it, right? That was the start. That was what kind of sparked uh, that thought. And so after I left that job was when I started looking more into sales into business, how money actually works, how people make money, started talking to successful people saying, Hey, uh, how many hours do you work? And they're like, well, I work quite a bit, but I love what I do. And it's never really work. And so when I started hearing that, I was like, well, how do you do it? And so it was that curiosity, right? It was, I got curious about life and started wondering, is there a different way than what most people think? And so that's what started me on this sales journey. You know, and I truly love it because that's something that I learned just recently to follow your curiosity because very often we hear like, find your passion, find your purpose, find your gifts. And to be honest, sometimes it's very overwhelming. Like, how do you distinguish what is passion and what is hobby? Because there are things that you really love, but it's not maybe the best way to like make a living out of it. So I really love that you got curious because I do believe that nothing is happening by accident and all the things that we get curious about, it's because they align in some level with what we are meant to do. So pursuing the curiosity, it's huge. No, I, I absolutely agree. I, I love that I pursued curiosity because I'll be honest, like you said, 
it's overwhelming. You don't know what you like and you have to try it. Like you don't know if you like it or not unless you try it. And so I tried so many different things that were epic fails, right? They were total fails. And I tried some things that I was really good at. Uh, but once again, I didn't love actually you know led me to move on to something else something else something else which I always tell people you know you have to try it curiosity is like amazing because if you don't follow that like you said uh, how are you supposed to really find what you love and what you're passionate about I wouldn't be where I'm at today I wouldn't be speaking on stages and you know coaching people one-on-one -on -one in companies if I first hadn't have tried all these different things and had these so-called fails right because people think it's a fail but it's really what I see it's a learning you don't know what you like until you try it and so I love that you said that yes absolutely mm. curiosity I love that. yeah so how do you overcome that failure you know because sometimes we don't know if we are on the right path unless we try and what if you keep trying and trying and trying and like when do you stop I know like there is no way back once you start However, you know, sometimes it's really discouraging. So how do you keep going and believing in yourself despite all those things that, not that failures, but they didn't work out the way you expected or hoped for? Okay, perfect. I love the question. I, lo I love that. Um, and it's super funny because I actually have a technique that I use for this that people called me crazy for, uh, but it's worked every time. Um, so yes, you're going to go out through things. You're going to fail. You're going to, you know, her and all these things when do you keep going like when do you, is do you stop or when do you keep going right and here's the thing after you try so many things you're gonna realize that you have key things that you're good at right so i knew i was really good at talking to people i figured out i was really good at stories at connecting at different things like that and i'll tell you guys this even once you figure out what you think you're good at that's not enough right because i got to the point where i was like you know what I know now that I don't want to work for somebody else. I want to work for myself because I tried working for other people and I know I want to work for myself and I know I'm really good at sales and helping people connect. But even that, even though I figured out what I believe it's my calling to really help people connect through story, through selling, uh, it wasn't enough. Okay. I had the solution in my hand, like I was given it, but it wasn't enough because because I still had that doubt, that fear, that question, that what if, what if I'm not good enough? What makes me valuable enough? And so I decided to put myself in situations where it was sink or swim, because I thought, you know what? I'm never gonna be really successful unless I'm all in, right? And the mm -hmm. only way to be all in is to put myself in a situation where there's no going back, right? And uh, I remember, so it was really funny. I'll tell you the real quick story of this. Uh, you know, my wife and I, we had, you know, just bought our dream home. We had just bought our dream cars. We had just had our first baby girl. We were so excited. We were living the life, right? But I was still not happy. And it was at this point where I said, I got bit by the entrepreneurship bug, right? Where I, I realized that uh, I, I didn't want to work for anybody else. I wanted to work for myself. And so I remember being at work right we're making over a hundred thousand dollars a year we're, we're comfortable right and I tell my wife I call her and I say hey um I, I think I want to quit my job and she was like what what do you mean I was like I think I want to quit my job and I want to start my own business and I was honestly on the inside I was kind of hoping she would say no <laughs> <laughs> and she was like sure go for it and you're like damn it now I gotta and do it <laughs> Yeah, and then she went up to me, okay? Then she went up to me and then she was like, how about I quit my job too and we both go into this? And I was like, um, well, uh, now we're cutting our income down to zero. Like she quits, I quit like zero. And I was like, well, she supports me. So I'm gonna support her and we're gonna start this entrepreneurship journey together, right? Well, let me tell you, we literally had this income coming in and from one day to the next, it was cut off to zero. Wow. Now, I'll tell you this. My thinking behind this was, it's crazy. It's insane. My parents, my family, my friends, everybody said, don't do it. You just bought your house. You just bought your cars. You just had a baby girl. Uh, there's no way. You, you need to think uh, for your family. You need to be the smart one. You need to support them. Your, your family can starve. And I was thinking, you know, I'm going to put myself in a situation where I'm either going to sink or I'm going to swim. Okay. And there's no other options. If I really believe that I'm meant for something, 
you're never really going to go into it until you fully accept it, jump in, until you have no other options, right? It's like they say, uh, once you want success as bad as you want to breathe, then you will have it. Well, I put myself in that situation. Well, my family is going to starve. I'm going to lose everything. We're going to live on the streets uh, unless I make it happen. And so that's really what I had to put myself in that situation was, you know what, let's step into it. Let's cut it all off and let's, let's go for it. Oh, that's amazing. You know, it's, I, I heard it with different analogy, you know, like burn the boats, you know, leave everything because the thing it's like, if you have a plan B, you will always be looking at that. Like you will always look at that back door. I can always run. I can always go back to work. And the thing is that when you have an option B, the option A will never work because you will never give it all and everything. And it's like, once you realize that you don't have other option, you have to make it work. You will do whatever it takes, how long ever it's going to take. So that's amazing. I really love it. The sink or swing and be all in. And I wonder how did you how did you like grow this passion for storytelling? Were you always so good in saying stories or it's something that you learned? It, it, it's something that it's funny because it's something that I learned. Uh, I think I just started sharing my experience right i started saying you know what uh this is what i've been through i know it's valuable to somebody i know somebody is going to connect to this so i'll just start sharing right so i started sharing here started sharing there and it's super funny that you asked that because the at first when i started telling stories people would check out they would say like oh you're still talking <laughs> i was like ah yes uh and and then eventually I got to the point where like, you're still talking. And I was like, oh no, I was done. Don't worry about it because you know, it just wasn't good. And so I'd always heard, and I, you know, I'd found people that said, you know, the best way to connect with somebody is through story. And so it was something that I just said, you know what, I'm just going to keep trying, keep trying, keep trying. And it's kind of one of those things where you have to jump all in. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I've, I've used that approach in just about anything that I've created in my life. Uh, it didn't matter how hard things got. Uh, I just kept going. And so, uh, and even to br bring this up, so, you know, after we quit our jobs and everything, right, uh, about three months later, uh, my power got, got shut off, my water got shut off, my truck was being repossessed, so I, like, had to hide my truck because I wasn't making any money. Okay, so it was hard, right? Like, and I put myself in the situation, and I, I, I was so scared so so scared i was afraid to talk to people to talk to anybody even though i knew i was good at something it was the overcoming that fear of rejection that that literally holds everybody back okay that fear of rejection is killer and the, the more uh intense the situation the more recognizable that is uh that you are afraid of rejection and so i got in that right uh literally everything got turned off and it wasn't until the day where my wife and I, our, our, our power, you know, got shut off, our water got shut off, and it was like 90 degrees inside the house, and it was unlivable. Like, my baby was soaked, right? And so I was like, I can't do this. So we decided to go sleep in the basement, right? And we went down to the basement, and we laid a, uh, it was an unfinished basement, just concrete and, uh, uh, you know, just empty down there. And uh, we laid a mattress down on this concrete floor and brought my daughter's like little crib set thing, laid it right next to us. And we just had to sleep there for the night. And it wasn't until the morning I woke up and I started to feel itchy when I was laying in bed. And I was like, what's going on? And I looked down and I'm covered in bugs, just covered in bugs. And I get up and I wake my wife up and I'm like, oh my gosh, the baby. And I literally go over, roll, look in there. And luckily nothing had got in there. But it was that time where my wife, and this was the time where I'll tell you that I just sat there and I cried. Like I, I didn't know what to do. I felt so helpless. And my wife and I are just sitting there in bed, just, just crying, bawling our eyes out. And she goes, I can't do this anymore. Can you fix this? And I said, I don't know how. But I remembered that I had no other option because we all come across that one point where we go, I don't know how, right? And if we're not in a situation where we must have success, then that's where people check out and we get it on social media. We get on Netflix. We go hang out with friends. We go do all these other distractions to numb the pain. But because I put myself in a situation, 
situation where I didn't have Netflix. I didn't have power, right? I couldn't do anything. Uh, I had to move. And so uh, I'll tell people this. It's, it's about just not giving up and putting yourself in a situation where you must be successful and you will be because there's no other option. So how did you get out if you didn't know how? And this is where I had to get over it, right? So I remember my wife when she looked at me right in my eyes and she said, don't you love us enough? Mm. Don't you love us enough to actually try? Because at this point I wasn't trying. And I remember that and that still hits home, right? It still hits me right in the chest. And I remember just looking at her and saying, okay. And I walked out of the house. I went for a walk, right? I went for a walk and I came back and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go somewhere, I'm gonna charge my phone because the power was off, right? I'm gonna charge my phone, I'm gonna get this going and I'm gonna just start calling as many people as I can, as many businesses as I can and try to set up a meeting to teach them how to increase their sales, right? Because my problem was in closing the deals and, and if they already had customers or people they could sell to, that was my bread and butter. That was what I could help them do, right? I just couldn't find these customers for myself. And so I, I remember calling everybody and people, and it was so funny because I remember the first time somebody said, sure, let's meet. Where do you want to meet? And I was like, well, I don't have an office. I don't have anywhere to meet with this person. Uh, let's meet at a Barnes and Noble, the bookstore, right? And so I met with them at this bookstore. And I remember just asking them questions, going through what I knew how to close somebody, which I'll give you the simple factor is finding out where they want to go, finding out where they're at and what they believe their biggest obstacle is and walking them through those steps. And I'll tell you there is where I signed my very first $750 and I was ecstatic, right? I was totally ecstatic. And I thought, you know, this works. So I'm going to do it again. And there's nothing like momentum. Okay. There's nothing like momentum. And when you make a sale, when you do something good, most people, what they do is they sit back and they celebrate and then they lose their momentum. And then the fear comes back and all these things happen. But in all reality, the best thing you can do is once you do something great, once you make a sale, go after the next one because momentum builds. And then all of a sudden within the next couple of months, with, I want to say about uh, about 60 days. Okay. I finished selling a $10,000 package. And so it went from $750 to $10,000 and I just kept it rolling. And so I'll tell you guys this, it, it really comes down to instead of stopping and celebrating, use that energy, use all this accomplishment energy, the success energy and all this that you have and point it somewhere. And I promise you, it'll keep on growing. So, mm, I love it. It's, it's truly about the momentum, you know, and like you said, like some people, they have like one client then they like lean back and celebrating yeah. instead of thinking about, okay, how do I get more of these, you know? And for me, honestly, like when I started my life coaching business and I got the first dream client, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's really working. Okay. How did I get her really? You know, like you reverse engineer and you think about like, okay, like I want more of this. And for me, it's like this constant, like improving and growing. And that's what excites me. Not like sit back and celebrate because once you get one, you know it's possible and that's what really gets you going. So that's incredible that, you know, from that situation, you really reflect that on what truly matters to you and that's your family. That's really making a difference, not just in your family, but in other people's lives. So, uh, and I, I love the formula, you know, where they are, where they want to be and what's in the way. So how do you take out what's in the way? Because in, for everybody, it will be different, right? Yes. And, and, and that's where your skills comes in, right? So I knew for a lot of people, it was so how to take a conversation from just being friends or just an acquaintance. How do you turn it into a sales call, yeah. right? Well, I knew how to do that. So when people gave me that objection, I was like, oh, that's super simple, right? And so depending on the objection right now, I'll tell you, there was a lot of people I met that I didn't know how to help. And with those people, I just said, you know, I'm gonna be honest, I, I don't know. Uh, but I may know somebody who can help and then I would refer them to somebody else, right? And this is one of the things that I think is probably the most important, especially in the coaching industry, is you're not supposed to work with everybody you have the right people to work with. And if somebody's not right, whether because they're not right or you're not right, don't be afraid to say no and, you know, 
point them in the right direction. And so uh, that's really what it came down to is when I found out, really found out what the issue was, whether it was closing, whether it was they were afraid of the pricing, whether people couldn't see their value, but all these things, I knew how to help people do that. I knew how to take somebody who was making something and help them amplify it and make a lot more. And mm -hmm. so regardless of that, I knew I could help them if that was the case. Hmm. And you know, there's one thing that you mentioned, it's really challenging to take the conversation from friends to sales. Is there any tip or any hack that anyone can try to do that would be yes. like, yes, I yes, for perfect. that. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Okay. So if you, so here's the thing, the first thing you must do is you must establish that you know something, right? So sharing what you know is key because if people don't know that you know something, uh, it makes it a little bit more awkward on our end, but always share, you know, I'm working on this. I know sales. I know, you know, all these things, but really like, let's say uh, it came down to you and me, right. And you were saying, Omar, how do I grow my, you know, if I wanted to help you grow your coaching business, I would ask somebody, I'd say, okay, so tell me where you're, uh, tell me where you want to go. Where do you want your, your business to go? Right. It's a conversation. You ask them about them, right. Where do you want your business to go? Okay, cool. So you want to grow your business. Uh, so where are you currently at? And they'll tell you, oh, I'm currently right here trying to grow here. Okay, so what do you think is standing in your way? What do you think the biggest struggle is or the biggest obstacle? They'll tell me, uh, well, it's getting more clients. How do I get people to come to me? Then I'd say, oh, awesome. I actually have some really good tips to help you with that. Uh, would you like to have a chat about it? I'll say, sure, right? Because if they just shared with you, right, a conversation of where they wanted to go, where they see the same formula applies in the close as same as a pre-sell because what you're actually doing in a conversation is you're selling them on wanting to do a sales call. Does that, mm -hmm. does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, so yeah. it's always about finding a, what their obstacle is. And then if you can help them, let them know. It, it's so simple to change a conversation and just say, you know, I can actually help you with that if you want to, you want to talk about it. Uh, and if you've actually done the first two steps correctly and ask them where they want to go and where they're at, they'll feel like they know you, yeah. like you actually care because you do know about their business. You actually know. And so it makes that transition that much easier. Mm, that's amazing. So the first step, it's where they want to be. And the second, it's where they are. Yeah. Then I mix it. Okay, perfect. Yes. Because I think I wrote it the other way around. That's amazing. I love that. It's, it's easy. It's doable. And it's something that anyone can apply in, you know, any kind of business. It doesn't matter if you have a life coaching or health coaching or, or whatever business you have, you can really apply easily those three steps. That's amazing. So one last question, Omar. Of course. If stranger comes to you and tells you, I'm just starting my business right now. What is the one most important thing that you want me to do in order to accelerate? Okay, perfect. Okay, so somebody starting out their business is actually super funny. Is the biggest thing that holds somebody back, a new person starting their business, is fear. Uh, but you can't tell them it's fear because they'll say, no, it's the marketing. No, it's the sales. No, I just don't have the product made or all these things. But in all reality, it's the fear. Okay. And, and it's super funny because I actually created a program, a course to help new business owners overcome that fear. Uh, but it, what I tell them is, is I ask them to just go cold call or knock on door to door and try to sell something. Okay, that's the very first thing I tell them because I know this for a fact. I know for a fact that they're going to fail. I know for a fact that they're not going to have a sale, right? And the reason for that is, is because they're new. They don't know. But here's the thing. In business, you know this, and I know this, and I'm sure everybody else who's been in business knows this. You're going to get told no a lot, right? You get told no more than you get told yes, that's just any business. If you're actually going for business, actually trying, actually prospect, actually going out and trying to grow your business, you're going to get told no a lot. And if you can't handle the very first no's at the beginning, there's no way you can scale because even if you get your product right and everything right, you're still going to have that fear to actually go talk to somebody. And so I help people with very beginning, just starting out. It's really about breaking through that fear uh, because after that, the statistics, how to market something, how to sell something, that's super easy, right? I can help somebody do that, no problem. But what I can't do is force somebody to take the action, 
Mm, that's powerful. Yes. Yes. That's how we learn, right? Yeah. Through going and doing and, okay, no, no, no. And then you stop caring. Okay. Then the no turns into just next. I yeah. love this. So if people want to stay in touch with you or just learn more about the programs and your coaching, what's the, like your favorite way to stay connected with others? Uh, Perfect. Uh, so I actually have uh, what's called my Legends Six Figure Sales Group. It's on Facebook. And it's a place where I like to give strategies, like we give tips uh, and all of these things on how to close more sales, how to bring in more customers, how to do things. But also, I, I know people want to tap into a different network to sell to, right? Because finding those first customers, finding the people to sell to and who to do business with, I also wanted to create that environment. So in the group, I have tons of people who actually meet and do business with each other, as well as learn and do all these different types of skills and things like that. And so I created this legends movement. And so I would say, add me on Facebook, Omar J. Camacho, uh, and ask to join uh, the legends. Like if you click on my profile page and you scroll down, you'll see that it says join legends and it actually has a button where you can click or send me a personal message and I'll add you. And I give tons of free value. I'll sit down with uh, people in the group and I'll just give them advice uh, because I remember what it's like trying to grow your business. And so I know that I have people who help me. And so I just want to pass that along and help mm, others. That's amazing. And you always share a lot of value and it's always fun. So thank you so much for your time. I really enjoyed it. No, thank you. Thank you so much for having me on. I think it was a ton of fun. I, I love that you asked great questions. <laughs> and so I love this. Thank you so much for having me part of this. And thank you so much for allowing me to share a little bit of my things that I've gone through uh, with your audience. So thank you.